The light cabin quilt block is a traditional block that has almost unlimited variations. So today I'm going to talk to you about different ways you can make a log cabin block. This pink and green scrappy log cabin block is made with the same measurements as my tutorial I gave for the basic log cabin block. But once you know how to do the basic block, there are so many different variations. And that's because there are four main components to this block, but each of those components can be individualized. So the four components that make up the log cabin block is are the center square that everything is based on. There are the number of bars that go around the center square. There's the width of the bars that goes around the center square. And then there's the fabric and the colors that you make it out of. So changing one or all of those things can give you a totally different look on your block. So the first thing that we can change is the center square. So the center square can be whatever size you want it to be. You can have a center square that is going to be the same width or the same size as the bars you're using. This is a nice traditional option. But you could also have something that is a lot smaller than the bars you're using or something that is a lot bigger. And using something that is a lot bigger than the bars, this is a nice opportunity to embellish it with maybe some embroidery or some free motion quilting or some applique. It's a great frame to go around a centerpiece. Of course, you could even start with a centerpiece that isn't even a square, but for all these examples, I'm using a square in the sample. But once you get started, it is really unlimited options. The next thing that you can change is the number of bars that you want to have going around the center square. You could have many, many, or you could have only a few. It's totally up to you. And that's an easy way you can change the size of your finished blocks, whether you want to have six inch blocks, 12 inch blocks, or 20 inch blocks. You could even just keep going around and around the center square and have your whole quilt be one giant log cabin block. The other thing that you can change is the width of the bars that are going around the center square. There is no quilting law that says all the bars have to be the same width. So if you are using up scraps, you can easily use whatever width you have. There's no need to trim and just go around the center block and you can get some really interesting effects that way. If you make a block and you have one of the colors or corners with a really narrow width of strips and the other color or corner with a wider one, then this is a really great effect to give you something that looks like a curve. And so these are really common in quilts that will give you curves and illusions of that without actually doing curve piecing. The last option that we have is with color options. And of course, like any quilts, the color options are almost unlimited. Traditionally, in a log cabin, one corner is one color and the other corner is the other color. And often, different shades of the colors are used just to give a little bit more depth to the block. But there's no reason that it has to be this way. You could use just totally different colors. If you wanted, you could match cool colors or warm colors or different color families. There's a lot of room to play around with that. But you can even move around from the whole idea of having one corner of one thing and another corner of the other thing. If instead of thinking corner and corner, you think of the rings around the center square, then you will get a totally different look and you would see echoes of the center square. These are just a few ideas to get you started. I'm sure you will have a lot of your own ideas for ways that you can customize a log cabin quilt block based on either the quilt design that you want to make or based on whatever fabric you happen to have to be making it with. For more inspiration for quilting, pajogging, and embroidery, be sure to check out my website, evitastudio.com.